at the All Ireland hurling semi final yesterday. There was a minute silence before the game. You know, a major talking point. Dermot Crow points out in the Sunday Independent, old school gentleman whose deeds will endure. Of course, talking about Galway's Tony Keady, Shane Kern, an unbelievable player in his day. Yeah, and I think you know, Dermot goes on to, to, to say he was the whole pen compendium of things loyal, reverent, hard, good hearted, stylish, and carefree. And it, Probably summed the man up. Um, I mean, I remember going, looking back on the the old clips throughout the week, and what a hurler he was, Anthony. Uh, I believe he was great crack and great company, <laughs> and loved a pint and uh, loved the old storytelling. Uh, worked obviously in Orden Moore, played in probably I'd say possibly the greatest half back line of all time. Uh, Joe McInerney himself and and uh, Pete Finnerty. He was at the heart of it. Uh, terribly sad. Um, time for hurling in Galway, terribly sad time for yourself as well as a teammate and uh, maybe you can just, uh, you know. Yeah, I suppose it's a shock really, what a week really for, for Margaret and these adorable kids really and he just out of the blue, you know, got a sudden attack and, you know, you know, you know, it was life support machine and tough times in the hospital for a few days but, you know, tragically at, uh, you know, 53 years of age to have departed and left behind him a very, very young family. Yeah. But Tony was, he was a gentleman, he was fanatic on, on sport, uh, just loved hurling. Um, and in the latter years for us, for, for, for us when, we, when we, we played with him and he's one of the guys, you know, there's no doubt he would be at the modern day Austin Gleeson or the Joe Canning. He yeah. had such ability and skill, um, always timed himself to be at his best in August and September. Um, and was, you know, he's he striking, he's, he's strength under the ball, his skill level, um, you know, and, and his ability to read the game was, was, was huge. For, you know, for what he, what he then transformed into really was a, was a brilliant family man. And um, he, he brought his kids everywhere. And when we used to train there for years, Tony would be at training every evening and he'd have the kids out at the back. <laughs> and he'd want you to see how, you know, what you thought of them. And they just were impeccably mannered. Um, even chatting them there over the last few days, I can, you know, even when Tony's remains were in, at the home house, the boys were out the back hurling at a game. Um, they were asking me what, what I think of the Waterford line out for the new guy that was in, Steve, uh, Shane Bennett uh, was in. Uh, so they, they are just fanatics as well, the young guys. Yeah. And, you know, he, he leaves a legacy behind him of his influence in the school, where he was a caretaker at Calistanches Secondary School in Ormore, was was huge, not, not alone from a sports side, but also for support to students and his popularity and his wisdom. He was an additional teacher, um, teaching resource for, for that school. And he, he touched the lives of many young players, both, both girls playing basketball and camogie and all the young, uh, young um, boys that were going through that school. So his influence was, was huge. He, he's adopted so his new club was where he settled for the last 15 years was 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 or more oh, yeah. and uh, he had served Calamar Daly which is uh, in the east east part of the county for four years um, but his legacy you know I mean a bit like yourself Shane when he'd go to a wedding he'd love jiving he'd sing a song um, you know just just his his ability to know people um, to hold court he this day this last Sunday week he held court outside the hotel before the match with a crowd around him and, why he was there and he was probably jiving the Tipperary guys with all in good spirit. spirit yeah. Yeah. Sport a moment of the weekend for me was uh, on Saturday we as a team at the 87-88 team and we all gathered and were allowed into pay our respects at the, at the same time and the Tipperary team en masse yeah. from 87-88, you know, Mickey English, the Rhines, uh, every one of them turned up uh, en masse as well and both teams uh, went in to pay our final respects to Tony and that was you know a huge huge moment and would have to say it, it epitomised the sport in Ireland and the G in Ireland yeah. and the camaraderie and I have to say some of the guys on that team hadn't met some of the Tipperary guys since maybe the final of that year yeah. and it was in sad circumstances but um, you know led by Babs Keating who was our manager at the time to have done that I think uh, and to have to show that solidarity says everything about what's good in our games. Yeah, I concur completely, Anthony, and I actually read that I think only five players, I think from the two squads, missed out when they were out of the country. And yeah. uh, 
it shows the power of of sport, the GA community, and and. Uh, I think we all, I suppose, over the next uh, couple of months and years, uh, we'll, we'll be with the Keedy family, Margaret and the kids, and wishing them all well.